Hello everybody and welcome back to Nervous Reviews. Today we are going to be reviewing Fire and Blood, a book that I believe is one of the best books I've read in years. This is a fantastic book and probably the best in the A Song of Ice and Fire general world. I'll be doing a non-spoiler section for about three minutes and then I'll leave a warning on screen and say it so that you can click off if you haven't read the book. Then I'll talk into an in-depth spoiler review. So Fire and Blood has often been compared to The Silmarillion by J.R.R. Tolkien. And I think that that is an incredibly apt comparison. Even though they differ in a lot of ways, it, it's very difficult for me to not see the fact that I think that this is one of the best books I've read in years, and Silmarillion is one of the best books I've read ever, to be a sign that they are similar in a way that is, is much more complicated than is obvious. I'm a huge history nerd. I love history. I love reading textbooks of history. I love learning history. I love learning about like weird countries that I didn't know existed and just like, following that for years. I love that. That's so fun to me. And this feels like that, but without the boring bits of real history. Because in real history, things get boring. You know, you'll have 10, 20 years where nothing happens, and then just, it's like 20 years of just nothing. And like, what do you talk about then? Do you, do you just say that nothing happened in 20 years, or do you really go ahead and dive deep into that? Well, in fantasy, you don't have to do that. In fantasy, there's no 20 years where nothing goes by. Even the least interesting parts of the story have interesting elements within it, which make it so that the story itself, while you're reading it, stays interesting the entire time. Now, don't get me wrong, if you're not as interested in reading 30 pages of some random fisherman, you're, you maybe won't enjoy this. I, I really have to be honest when saying that this is a particular book that was perfect for me. Perfect for me. I, like, I can't believe how perfect it was for me. But I know that a lot of people don't like this book. And so I have to leave a warning out there. If you're not really weirdly into fantasy, like weirdly into like stories of like history and stuff and just wanting to know how things came about in a really organic and interesting way, you don't read this book. This is not for you. If you want a story, this is not for you. This is a textbook. This isn't fun for most people. It just so happens that I'm interested in the history that it's telling, and therefore I love this. There are very few parts of the story that are uninteresting. This is just a fascinating tale from start to finish in a way that is not palatable to everybody, but I think it's palatable to enough people that it's meaningful for me to make this review and really say, can really consider it, like really consider what you're into and really consider if you're into this kind of dense storytelling that doesn't illustrate absolutely everything, but in many ways is fa fascinating. Just think about that. And if you are, you might want to read this book. And now for the spoiler section. I love this book. I think that it is fantastic. I think that starting from Aegon, I think the conquest and I think the adult nature of the story makes it so fascinating because in a lot of stories, like in the Silmarillion, while it was a fascinating little tale of the history of the world, it lacked a lot of the adult themes and the adult interesting, um, gory, uh, tragic, um, scary, fearsome details that a story like this has or real stories have. And I think that making up for that really adds a level of depth to a history textbook that you don't often see, and it, it means a lot in an actual story. I was considering whether or not to read this book because I wanted to watch The House of the Dragon. So what I decided was I would read it even though I've only read two out of the five original books. And I think that that was a good decision because this book has very little to do with the rest of the series. And I think that this book is only interesting if you care about the world that the books originally are set in. And it's kind of hard for me to care about Stark at this point, care about like the Lannisters, care about like, oh, where did, where did the first men go? Like, who, why, why would I care? But I think that I care about history. You know, I live in Canada. I'm a Canadian. Dollar dollar coins because I'm a Canadian living in Toronto, boy. And so even though I, I don't really care about Canada right now, to the fact that I live in Canada and the fact that I've experienced Canada makes it that much more interesting to read a textbook about Canada. That is such a fascinating way of putting a spin on something that I already know just by nature, just by existing and giving me the real story of what is happening. And that's a similar thing to what I did here. Maybe if you've read the first five books and you've really gone through the lore and you love all that stuff, then you're absolutely gonna love this book. There's no doubt in my mind. But for a more casual person like me, where, you know, where did the Starks come from? Where did the old towers go? Where did the high towers go? These, these kind of things are not as interesting to me at the start, but because I love the idea of, of learning about these things, I read the book and I just loved it. So if I were to go chapter by chapter, I would say that the first king, Aegon the Conqueror, is a fascinating beginning. And I felt that this was a little bit rushed, but in a way that was really good when you think about like a textbook. In a textbook, things are rushed, right? But you get all the details and you get all the interesting tidbits. It, it is a fascinating story to read from the outside. And it's very difficult. George R. R. Martin is a fantastic writer, just fantastic. I, it's so difficult to put someone in the mind of a story like that. I just did the Mistborn 2 review, and I'm telling you, Sanderson has nothing on this guy. George R. R. Martin is fascinating because he's able to really put you in the mind of both the conqueror and the people that he's conquering in a way that's so natural, that's so organic. And so when you're reading the story, you're really, really empathizing with both the people that exist on Westeros and then the people that are conquering it. And, and you see a lot of the fascinating details. And just seeing the end of the story and the beginning of the story, just seeing like how the people of Westeros slowly begin to accept 
the the Targaryen rule as good. And then, of course, within the legitimate books, the fact that people are saying that the Targaryen rule was bad. Like, that's such a fascinating way of encapsulating the loyalties within this work. It's really, really fascinating. And so, the first part... And so, the first part... And so, the first part of the story, which is Aegon the Conqueror, was a little bit dense, a little bit difficult to understand, but was fascinating and read almost like a, a beautiful poem as if it was like a, a, a mythos it was just really really fascinating to read and it was dense in a way that was really really interesting it really set the tone for the rest of the book following that of course we have Aenys and Maegor who amazing like imagine like starting off with the beginning and just having like a really good opener which is Aegon the Conqueror and then moving on to a literal like basically a civil war to a succession crisis already like right away it is amazing that he was able to stick this in so organically so realistically and with so like so realistic not even realistic but these are cartoonish they're not realistic at all but, but we, we empathized with them regardless. They were cartoonish in a way that was so entertaining for me to read. And they were cartoonish in a way that a textbook might portray people from 300 years ago, right? How many people from like 300 years ago do we think about in grace, right? Everybody from 300 years ago, or even like 50 years ago, we kind of think of them in black and white. And it, it's very difficult for us to get out of that mindset. And, and of course, textbook would portray them as black and white, which is what, of course, Martin does. So it's really, really fascinating in that way. Now, of course, all of the interesting stories that are surrounding this are just really really interesting like the invasions of Dorne and just the Dorne's rebellion and like the the characters that are named are just the really really great kings and queens and fascinating little characters within the story I can't talk about this enough it, it, there's so many great details and so many side stories that while maybe are meaningless to the entire story of this textbook of the Targaryens they end up being just fascinating just fascinating because each of these stories is interesting and they they connect so discreetly so quietly so simply simply so subtly to the rest of the main story that it's so rewarding to read them and just know that in a textbook you have to kind of put your mind in this of, of, of these people existed who was this sailor who was this random guy who claims that he's the bastard son of like this one random king you just have to believe that these people are real um, in a way that they're not and really just accept that and just say oh these are real people and that's really interesting to see how normal people interacted with the king that kind of thing is very very fascinating and then we go to jeharis and jeharis is probably my favorite chapter in the entire book i think the first and second jeharis chapters are really really great because they don't rely on these very cliched things that we have before like before we have a lot of cartoon characters like mago who's a complete cartoon but a cartoon in a good way now we don't really have that crutch now we really just completely rely on martin's storytelling ability and it, it is marvelous the fact that he kills this chapter just kills it he has jeharis who is by every account, the most boring king, especially in the original draft of this, where he was like almost non-existent. We have such a lame king that somehow Martin was able to go in and insert so many interesting details while keeping the major story intact and make it into a story about like this guy holding together the entire the entire Targaryen dyna dynasty and dealing with his children and dealing with like all of these people in his kingdom that are trying to fight back at him, even though nothing major happens. So many small things happen that it's such a treat to see such an organic, real, this is su such a realistic story. Jehari seems like a story that, while the other stories were, you know, textbook stories, this feels like a story that we know so much about. This feels like something that might have happened 20 years ago and we're just reporting on it now. So we have so many details, so many great points that we're able to see these as real people, Alisan and, and Jeharis and his children as real people. When that, when his, one of his child move up, moves up to, I, I believe, Lise, like that's such a real, raw story. And it's such a stupid thing that like, you know, textbook might not mention, but of course, this is like a really subtle, beautiful plot by Martin. And so he has to include that. And it's just so fascinating to see how much he does with so little. Following Jehari's, uh, I, I believe there was another succession crisis. Like, of course there was, I'm not surprised about that. Um, and we go back to like, of course, it's an interesting succession crisis. And then we move on to, I, I can't remember his name, Jaysaris, J J Um the, the father who is currently in the House of the Dragon. He's not that interesting. I think he takes a very minor place in the plot and that's totally fine because I, I think Martin knew that he wasn't a very interesting character. And so you, you just don't take too much of him and then you see the follow-up to his story as the most fascinating thing. However, I do have to point this out because I'm watching the House of the Dragon and in House of the Dragon, he's a great character. He's a fascinating, fantastic, really deep, interesting character with so many intricacies and i i believe that you know said he wrote about this actually martin before i started recording i just read a uh, blog post by martin where he said that he wants to go back and change everything about this king because the house of the dragon did it so well and i agree like he is the best character that has improved compared to the book of course without a doubt and of course following him we get the real story which is they dance with the dragons and that is a huge fascinating 
Um, and in my opinion, it is, it is the only part of the story that lags. This, this part of the story lags quite a bit. And it's it's difficult for me to get past that, but it, it's not too difficult because there were so, certainly many parts of it that were just interesting, but it did feel like this relatively small time period is something that is something that shouldn't have been touched on upon as much as like the real true times of reigning of the kings. Um, it's a rebellion, it was great, it was like fights and a civil war, but it, it and it, of course it involved all of Westeros. It was a great, it was a great, beautiful, big uh, climax like story, and I don't have anything against it. I, it was a great story. To me, I was more interested in the peaceful times like in Jehari's, and I think that that was really the best part of the story of this entire book was Jehari's. And compared to that, the Dance with Dragons felt a little bit more cliched. And it was so, but regardless, like there were so many details, and the, the way that he framed it with all these like Ar Archmaester Gildane and like the, the the dwarf is giving these accounts, it was fascinating. It was original. It was really really strong, and it, it definitely served as a great final conflict and climax for this story. And I, I don't have any regrets about that. And I think that the way that it ended was fantastic. There are a few stories that I really believe ended on such a note, not because of the writing, but because of just what it did. Like, how many times can you really just say? Like, just say the ending of a story, and people are like, wow, that is amazing. Martin has the end of this book be so amazing that I could literally say it to people, and I can say it to you, which is that all of the characters, all of them, that we were trying to get to work, every single one of the characters wanted the throne dies, and it is given to somebody who kind of wants the throne, but doesn't really, and it completely destroys him and it destroys him in a way that he becomes a bad leader in, in not just like in not just like a you know lazy way like oh I don't care so they, they all start fighting but like he becomes a bad leader like I assume I don't know I assume that he's gonna become like a really awful leader and I just cannot wait for that to happen because it's such a natural progression of like a, a game of thrones this is a game of thrones these two great entities want to fight for the throne and both of them lose and that is just a great way of ending the story of course in house of the dragon i'm spoiling this book so i don't care if you've only watched house of the dragon we have two main characters which is alicent hightower and then reyna targaryen and both of these people are trying to get the throne essentially within the later part of this book and it is amazing that neither of them win neither of them win. reyna dies i'm not sure but i think that all of our children die i can't remember exactly who inherited the throne at the end of all this? It was either Reyna's children or Alicent's children. And as far as I can tell, Alicent's gone, Alicent's 100% dead, and then most of any any of the major heirs that we assume that Alicent is gonna put forward are also gonna die. And we have, are we left with like, basically the Ren of Kid who takes on the throne. And I think that's a really fantastic, fascinating way of saying that if you're, if you're, if you're playing the Game of Thrones, you're gonna get hurt. It's difficult for me to review this in any way other than sections. And so that's why I did what I just did. But suffice it to say that it felt like a complete real textbook. In a textbook, as if it was edited down by a storyteller and it was edited based on one of the greatest stories to have ever been told. Like what if you have a what if you have a textbook on the history of Greece, the, the prime of Greece, and you really edit it down to like a beautiful, fantastic story story, and we have so many more details than we actually have, and you make it written by so many interesting people, and you give viewpoints and you give like you have great characters, all of whom are named, and it's much what if Greece was, was like much smaller and we had like a whole textbook about that. That's what the story is like. It's like the ideal textbook for a history work. And I it, I read it like that and it was fantastic. I love so many of the side sections, like the sea snake, who was so fascinating. I loved reading everything about like people adventuring to different parts of the world, so like so far away. I just can't stop fangirling about this story. And so, of course, I have to rate this a five. It has genuinely, completely changed my outlook on how stories are to be written and how stories can be perceived by the people that are reading them. It's just amazing. It completely shook my world in that way. It might go down to a four at some point, but for now, it's definitely a five. If you enjoyed this review, please leave a like down below and let me know what you thought of my review and what you thought of the book in and of itself. And if you like book reviews or fantasy reviews, you can subscribe to my channel. I do this quite a bit. Thank you so much for watching. And if you want to read my Goodreads review before the review comes out, the video review comes out, you can click the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.